I've been in a lot of dramas before, but out of all of the ones I've been in, this one certainly has the most ups and downs. And it's been going on for half a year, Jesus Christ. But before we go any further, I just want to ask all of you guys to please not attack anyone mentioned in this video. If you're going to comment on any of the videos I cover, please at least keep it constructive. The good news is the drama does seem to be cooling off a lot. Now videos being made about the subject only get a fraction of the views that they used to get. Which, in all honesty, I think is a good thing. It's a lot easier to know what's going on when less people are involved. Today we will be talking about Kai and Avnia. And I know I keep saying this, out of all the videos I made, I'm probably the most afraid to make this one. But I mean it now more than ever. I'm not really afraid of the size of Kai and Omnia, more so, well, last time I talked about them it didn't go over so well. Maybe if I talk about them by myself and don't include anyone in the video, things should go over a lot more smoothly. I'm going to do my best to be nice in this video, and I'm also going to have my roommate, Professor Dreadlock, who by the way, is a POC, look over my video before I upload it. So for those of you who don't know what the hell is going on, allow me to give a quick little recap. There was this thing called the Toby drama, and because of poor research, people missing context, rumors being spread, along with a whole bunch of other shit, many people mishandled the drama and things quickly went from bad to worse and I'm probably the most at fault for this. This caused a lot of people to make videos on yours truly. I was pretty terrified, but people quickly forgot about me and started going after Hopeless Peaches. It all started with Prison Mate Luke's video on her. It by far had the most damning claims, but the evidence to support those claims really weren't that good. In fact, sometimes they contradicted them. This caused a lot of people, and I mean a lot of people, to start making videos on Hopeless Peaches. Many of them spread around claims that Luke made, and the claims Camilla Cuevas made. Camilla Cuevas did have some proof of Hopeless Peaches bashing her in a Camino post, but she left out the fact that she apologized for that, and they worked things out two to three years ago. I mean, people got on my ass for reviving the Toby drama because it was a month old, but this is just ridiculous. Avrona made a few claims, but in retrospect, Peaches was absolutely right about him. The dude's completely insane. And the most popular video on Hopeless Peaches was the one made by Creepshow Art. She spread around a few of the false claims made up about Hopeless Peaches, and she had a few unique claims of her own. But to this day, she really doesn't have a whole lot of evidence to, you know, prove them. If you want more information about all of this, I have a Hopeless Peaches playlist where I went over Creepshow Art, Prismate Luke, Camilla Cuevas, and Avrona. But now we come to the last two. The end of the big five. Or six, I guess. Kai and Omnia. Out of all the people being covered in the Hopeless Peaches drama, they have so far received the least amount of criticism. The main thing Omnia has received criticism for was her use of Hopeless Peaches' grooming video in her second thumbnail about Hopeless Peaches. I think I recapped everything pretty good. With everything out of the way, let's dive right into Omnia's apology video. Before I watched her apology, a lot of people told me it wasn't very good. That she was playing the victim, pushing the blame off onto others, making excuses, and many other things. But after watching it three times over, I think it's pretty good. She avoids the sigh at the beginning. She doesn't say I'm sorry but, and she takes full responsibility for what she did. I really don't have that much of a problem with it. Unfortunately, I cannot accept her apology on behalf of Peaches because the apology, well, it's to Peaches and it's not to me. 1. I do not agree with Prismate Luke's claim that Hopeless Peaches is a suicide baiter, and Hopeless Peaches, from what I understand, knows as much and has stated as much in her recent response video. I can only see her seeing me coming to Luke as an issue if she agreed with Luke's claims of me faking my suicide in the first place, which as far as I know, she doesn't agree with. 
Although I stated this in my first video on peaches, and although she did apologize to me and Kai, she decided to go back on her word two days later and try to paint prison mate Luke as this guy who stalks her every move and wants her to off herself. It's disgusting and deplorable. You can't apologize to Kai and I, then immediately make the same mistake or similar mistakes with someone else. And commented this on Luke's first video on peaches, I want to clarify that I was ill-informed at the time and wanted to make clear that I currently do not believe Luke's claims hold any weight. Good on you, Omnia. I'm happy you made that clear. A lot of people can be misinformed on a situation. I know I certainly was with you two. I also heard that Prismate Luke might be making an apology to Peaches himself. Don't know if that's true or not, that's just what I've heard. So Creepshow Art, uh, you're the only one we're waiting on. I should not have used Luke's experiences with Peaches to justify my own unwillingness to accept her apology. Despite that, I still do not accept Peaches' apology in regards to the Toby situation, and the reasons behind why that is will be revealed later within this video. I can't really speak for Omnia or Hopeless Peaches, but I really wish they would set aside their differences and forgive one another. Saying sorry is hard, but forgiving someone can be just hard, if not harder. I'm a pretty forgiving guy unless someone, you know, sleeps with my girlfriend or whatever. I'm not gonna have too much of a problem with them. I genuinely think both Omnia and Hopeless Peaches just made a few mistakes. As Mr. Miyagi said, having no forgiveness in your heart is a fate worse than death. But if neither of them want to forgive the other, well, I can't force them. Let me clarify something really briefly. The beginning of this year has not been smooth sailing for me. On New Year's Day, I was actually experiencing a lot of personal issues, mostly having to do with personal relationships with both my in real life friends as well as my online friends. Now here's where some people thought she was making an excuse, and I disagree. I think it's totally in the realms of possibility that she was having real life problems. A lot of people have been having a rough time because of the pandemic. I was having some IRL problems myself during the Toby drama, and when I brought that up a lot of people downplayed the problems I was having IRL and said I was making an excuse. So I'm not going to do the same thing to Omnia here. Omnia. Your coverage of the Peaches situation was interesting and I genuinely don't have the time to speak on your videos. The one thing I will speak on however is something I've already mentioned to you publicly in the past, to which you responded with a someone else did it, so it's okay if I do argument, like if someone else jumped off the cliff, you'd do the exact same thing. You used Peach's thumbnail from her grooming video for your thumbnail, which either indirectly or directly has sent her hate from people who looked at said thumbnail and proceeded to put scrutiny on the truth of her grooming video. And you still haven't denounced said beliefs. You should change this thumbnail. It's firstly very disrespectful to use a thumbnail from such a traumatizing video for your own video, but secondly, you know the harm it's causing and don't care. This seems very disingenuous and malicious and I'd appreciate if you changed it. For the most part, I can agree with Harley on this segment of his video. His point that my usage of Peach's thumbnail indirectly led viewers to put scrutiny on the validity of Peach's grooming story is sound, though, as I've stated previously, those are conclusions the audience members came to on their own accord and I should not be held accountable for the conclusions that my viewers have come to regarding this thumbnail. Unless I've specifically stated myself that I personally do not believe Peach's grooming story, you cannot correlate those conclusions with my beliefs. And that's a fair point, no one can really control their audience. And I'm also happy with Harley when he said, either directly or indirectly, giving her the benefit of the doubt assuming she didn't do it on purpose. If Peaches simply had made it publicly or privately clear to me why she was okay with Squirt's thumbnail but not mine, provided additional context pertaining to the consent she gave regarding his usage and her relationship with that particular piece of art as soon as Harley questioned me about my intentions on December 16th, I highly doubt this situation would have blown up the way it has today. Now some people did see this part as Omnia victim blaming and yeah, I can kind of see why. I can understand why Peaches didn't contact Omnia publicly or privately. She just made two massive videos on her, and from Peach's perspective, Omnia probably wasn't willing to listen to her. That being said, I can understand Omnia's perspective as well. While she did get a little bit of backlash, Peaches, the main victim, didn't come forward and tell her. In all honesty, I would have probably done the same thing if I was in her shoes. It's not my art at the end of the day, so I really have no right to object to that. I simply needed her to communicate at least that. If she had simply just made it publicly or privately clear to me like, hey, I would appreciate it if you didn't use my art in my thumbnail, then that would have been the end of it. No communication was had and that's where the problem lies. You cannot get upset at me for not doing something you never even indicated you wanted in the first place. Okay, I'm willing to give you the benefit of the doubt. Omnia and assume this was just bad wording on your part, 
but this does come across as a bit victim blamey. I'm sure you just made a mistake. I'm willing to give you the benefit of the doubt. But people can still get mad at you for making a mistake. I'm one of those people who get more mad at someone if they intentionally break a $50 vase than if they accidentally knock over a $500 vase. But I still have the right to be mad at them if they made a mistake. And from Peach's perspective, maybe she thought you weren't willing to change it because other people already talked to you about changing it. So maybe from her perspective, she thought to herself, well, if she's not going to listen to them, then she's not going to listen to me either. Omnia goes on to explain that Hopeless Peaches did later talk about Omnia's use of the thumbnail on Twitter, but she was blocked. She does claim that Hopeless Peaches blocked her the same day she made the post, but I don't know if it's true for sure because, well, there's no dates given of the blocking. It is certainly possible that Hopeless Peaches could have blocked her before, but I don't know for sure. I didn't mean to hurt you with my thumbnail use, and I'm sorry that I did that. I simply did not receive any clarification directly from you detailing your consent, comfort, or distaste with my thumbnail, and I had acted foolishly. But you cannot discount or invalidate my extremely well-founded, well-documented negative experiences with you because certain audience members came to the conclusion that you lied about your grooming story on their own volition. Now, some people think that Omnia used Hopeless Peach's grooming video for her thumbnail, to intentionally send people after her. But the fact of the matter is, we don't know for sure, and I'm willing to give her the benefit of the doubt. Her video on Hopeless Peaches was a bit... off in some areas. A lot of the conclusions Omnia came to were very similar to how Hopeless Peaches came to the conclusion about her thumbnail. A lot of it seemed like misinterpretation, or certain phrases meaning things to different people, like Hopeless Peaches saying that she knows Kai and Omnia, when Kai and Omnia says she doesn't know them enough. But of course, this whole argument is subjective. Everybody has their own definition of what it truly means to know someone. And Omnia, I just want to clarify that according to Manga Common, Hopeless Peaches tried talking Manga Common out of the script he made. And she worked on it before me and Butters were involved. And in retrospect, if we didn't get involved and Manga Common just made the video himself without me and Butters changing anything, everything would have gone down so much better. I said a lot of stupid things, and I didn't know Butters was a friend of Toby until after she joined the project. At that point, I thought it would be bad sportmanship if I just kicked her out of the collab. But Butters ultimately did take out a lot of the criticisms we had for Toby. But in the end, it was still my video, so I take full responsibility for her actions. I would simply describe this as a misunderstanding on both you and Harley's end. As I've stated previously, the thread and replies I created on March 12th were not meant to be my refusal to alter the thumbnail. Rather, it was simply my way of looking for answers, me asking for clarification, seeking to understand why there were inconsistencies with my usage and your friend's usage of the same image. I was looking for an explanation that was never provided to me till I asked for it myself. Well, I'm willing to believe that Omnia didn't know Skritis had consent from Hopeless Peaches to use her thumbnail. It should also be noted that Skritis' video wasn't an attack video, while Omnia's video was a criticism video. So I can understand, even if Hopeless Peaches didn't give Skritis consent, why she would be okay with his use of it and not hers. But I am glad that Omnia is giving Harley and Hopeless Peaches the benefit of the doubt, saying that the whole thing was probably just a misunderstanding on both of their ends. Honestly, I don't think any of these dramas would have gotten so out of hand if there was better communication on both sides. But now we come to Kai's portion of the video and, um, oof. Once again, I'm gonna say please don't attack anyone. At all. Please don't send them any hate messages, for the love of God. I'm gonna be skipping what he said about Harley because Harley already made a post responding to a lot of the claims Kai and Omnia made about him, so if you want to know about that, uh, you can either pause this and read it or check the link in the description. I'm going to try my best to be as nice as I can here, but let me tell you guys, it's not that easy. And I'm just going to skip the Joker impression. Here's what he had to say. Kai, that was like the best part of the video and 95% of the reason why I was in the video with him. Why would you skip it? It was so funny. But in all seriousness, one thing I have to note is that I joined in on the last minute. I did not know what Harley was going to say. In retrospect, that was a pretty dumb idea. But the main problem I have with Harley's video is that he gives me an angry face. Like, Harley, why? I was trying to sound reasonable. 
I know I don't have that much emotion in my voice, and that's why I use stills to show my emotion. Why did you use the angry face? Hi, Anomnia. I'll give you some friendly advice. I would advise against doing a video on Hopeless Peaches, or the Hopeless Peaches situation at all. Unless, of course, it's to apologize and, you know, permanently throw Prismate Luke under the bus. That's really your best option here. Daddy Luke is not around anymore, and I've noticed that your two videos on Peaches agreeing with him are still up. I apologize on behalf of my editor for the whole Black Spongebob thing. And no, it's not blackface, it's black. There's no exaggerated black features. But Omnia, you made that thumbnail yourself. You did it intentionally, and it took you forever to change it. The tides of battle have turned. But I don't want this to keep going. I made a mistake, and I don't want you two to make the same one I did. I'm holding out an olive branch here, but this is the last chance I'm willing to give. I recommend taking it. For one, I don't want your olive branch. You can keep it. I told you once before in my video on you, I don't want your apology, and I honestly don't want anything to do with you. And it's also hilarious to me that Hotbox can do so many awful attack videos on Hopeless Peaches. He says sorry, doesn't really explain what he does wrong, he just says sorry, and she forgives him. But yet you can't do the same. Really? I made my response and you realized your video wasn't good. I don't need anything else from you. Also, neither I nor Omnia made the claim that your black Spongebob was blackface. Well, I never made the claim that you and Omnia said it was blackface. Now, to be fair, I should have worded myself better here. I was more so referring to the people who do think it's blackface and not specifically you and Omnia. However, many people did make the claim that it was blackface, such as Prismate Luke, and I think Thuman did as well. But just to clarify, Kai and Omnia didn't claim it was blackface, at least to my knowledge. Omnia literally said herself that it was just simply black. Also, would you mind explaining why you decided to throw in Black Spongebob while you were reading it? Like, genuinely. What purpose does that serve? Is that supposed to be for entertainment purposes too? Was it supposed to be funny? Was it supposed to get people to laugh about black people? Or like, Kai's black. LOL, Black Spongebob, you know, like, this is such a funny idea. I don't know, just questions I'd really love answers to, bro. And I answered those questions for Omnia and apologized on behalf of my editor. My editor also explained himself. Jar has no intentions to put anything like that in his videos. His editors do what they want to do. They put what the fuck they want to put in the video. That's just how it's always been. Every editor sends Toby, Josh, Lemmy, me, all the editors have a free will to put what they want in the video. So this is completely on my bad. And I do want to mean this. I do not intend it to be racist or anything remotely shape or form at all with that. And to give the brief context of why it was there, but basically, the reason why the Black Spongebob was put there was just because I thought Jar kind of sounded like Spongebob. And I had that Black Spongebob from the race bending video I did for Jar. I re-edited the race bending video and did a bunch of thumbnails for him. Along with one of his friends. Thank you so much for bringing me on for this video. I would like to say that the editor... Um did not have any ill intentions in this video. He did not mean to hurt people. I myself am African American and I feel no real hatred or ill intentions in this video. It was extremely inappropriate joke. But I've known this guy for years and he would never make any kind of joke like this. He actually in fact condemns people who are legitimately racist and say racist jokes. It is not his intentions to be racist. Now, a lot of people have made the argument that, oh, it's one of Jar's editors. Of course he's going to say whatever Jar wants him to because he's paid by him. The thing is that editor has only worked on like three or four of my videos and I don't work with him anymore. Trust me, my editors will leave me at the drop of a hat. I have gone through literally dozens of them. But unfortunately Kai, and to a lesser extent Omnia since he is in her video, didn't really like the answers I gave and we're gonna get into that now. 
My real issue is with your reasoning, Jar. This is what you said. As for the black SpongeBob he put up when I was reading Kai's comment, that's an inside joke between me and my editor from the race bending video. We didn't mean for it to come across as racist, but it kind of did. So I do apologize for that. For the love of God, I don't know why he thought it was a good idea to put it in. But if I asked him to take it out, then the video would have taken even longer to upload, so... I was kind of screwed either way. You made an inside joke about race bending, which is something that black folks use to create a space for other black artists to reimagine their favorite characters to look like them in a medium where black representation is little to none. Wow, okay, wow, there's a lot to unpack here. First of all, Kai, for someone who complained about Harley speculating about the video you and Omnia were gonna make, you certainly did a lot of speculation with me saying it's an inside joke. Now that's what my editor told me to say. It was an inside joke. What was the inside joke to him? Well, he put it in a thumbnail one time. Hilarious, I know, right? I don't see the attempt at humor either. The dude does have autism, and a common trait of autism is finding things funny that no one else does. He also tried explaining to me that he thought the inside joke was that I kind of sounded like Spongebob, which I completely disagree with. But personally, what I thought the inside joke was, was when he made the thumbnail for me, Black Spongebob, as a race bent, doesn't really work because, well, Spongebob is not any race, he's a fucking sponge. And if we actually put it in the thumbnail, it could have been taken the wrong way. And I thought that's what the inside joke was. You joking about something like that is an issue. Making Spongebob black to what? Make fun of black artists and cosplayers that create beautiful works like this to gain representation in their own way? No, Kai! No, please, no, don't show me that! Race bending should be illegal, it just offends me so much. <laughs> but in all seriousness, Neither me nor my editor made this black Spongebob. Now in case I mistranslated Kai and he was talking about making the joke and not making the black Spongebob image, he doesn't even know what the inside joke is, and no, it was not to make fun of black people wanting to race bend characters. The fact that you jumped to that conclusion is just bizarre to me. I would really like to know how you came to this conclusion. Kai, I said in my race bending video that race bending can work with characters like Miles Morales. Now, race bending can sometimes work, like with Miles Morales. But sometimes it doesn't work when they just race bend background characters for no reason in particular. Just so the production company can say, oh, look how progressive we are. They only race bent the background characters! They're not doing anything! The three main characters are white, the comic relief is white, and most of the side characters are white. It's only the background characters who are diverse. It's not good representation when it's just a blip in the background that no one can really identify with. And I understand why the majority of characters who are race bent are white characters. There's really not enough black representation or representation of other groups. I've seen a lot more white characters race bent into other races than other races are race bent into being white. Now, to be fair, there are way more white characters than there are any other race of character. I don't think if you take a white character and make them a different race, you're anti-white or anything like that. They could certainly use a little bit more, but I don't think race bending is a good way to go about this. It's only a temporary fix. There are original black characters like in Cannon Busters. It's too bad that no one watched it. Kai, I totally get where people who want representation are coming from. As a guy on the spectrum, I'm kind of sick of Hollywood autism. The only character on the spectrum that has been unique in recent years is, well, uh, Eli Mosquist, aka Hawk. And that's about it. What was the point of doing that? That is why you got called out for it, Jar. I'm surprised you apologized for that and decided to still attempt to justify it by saying it wasn't blackface, it was black, as if me and Omnia ever made that claim against you. I didn't claim that you or Omnia claimed it was blackface. I was defending myself from others claiming it was blackface. Me defending myself is not me justifying my actions. How did you even come to this conclusion? Jesus. I didn't start defending myself from people calling it blackface until others made the claim. 
Even in my apology video to you and Omnia, I didn't claim it was blackface. One thing I've noticed about Luke, Kai, and all the others is they really like to ignore the fact that it was my editor who did that. Now, a rumor has been spread that I don't check what my editors put up, and the fact of the matter is, guys, I do check what they put up. I just don't always catch everything. One of the most infamous examples of this was my I Hate Discord video. I said in that video, Discord is full of pedos, and they put up an image of a guy who I didn't recognize. After a while, I got a bunch of angry comments from Mr. Enter's fans. Then I realized that person was Mr. Enter, so I blurred out his face. And if you watched either of our videos on Peaches, you would see that Omnia never agreed with Luke in her videos. They had nothing to do with Luke at all, aside from Omnia using it as a reason to discredit Peaches' apology, which she already addressed earlier in this video. I'm sorry, Kai, but that's agreeing with someone. I'm glad she explained herself now, and I want to make it very clear to everybody that she now explained herself. But not accepting Peach's apology because of Luke's video is still agreeing with him. Yes, she didn't say everything Luke said is true and I 100% agree with him on everything, but she still agreed with him. And you were talking about the black Spongebob image as if I was trying to make fun of black people. I don't know Omnia's life, you don't know my life. Harley did reach out to you and try to talk the situation over and because you didn't want to talk to him, well, that led us to the conclusion that we came to. You talk about the thumbnail with absolutely no context to Omnia's life or reasoning to even understand why. Hi, I wasn't talking about your video. I haven't even seen your video on Hopeless Peaches. I said, and I noticed your two videos, the two videos Omni made, agreeing with Luke are still up. But I can understand how you came to the conclusion you came to. Sorry if there was any miscommunication there. And I never agreed with Luke on anything in my video. I explained his perspective and criticized Peaches for the comments she made about me in his comment section. My disgust with Peaches was saying that Luke implied that she wished she would die because of her tweets. No, Luke should not have called Peaches a suicide baiter, but Peaches should not say that Luke wanted her to die. Okay, never mind. I take back what I said. You did agree with Luke in your video. I'm not saying you agree with him 100% on every little detail, just that you agreed with him on a few things. Peaches never said that Prison Mate Luke wanted her to die. She didn't even use his name in the comment. She said, because I didn't die, she's self-deprecating herself, saying if she only went through with self-deletion, she wouldn't be having to deal with all the backlash. Self-deprecating is something a lot of people do to make themselves feel a little better. I know I do it. Hey all, Editing Kai here. Uh, there's one more thing that I would like to mention at this point in the video, and that is this screenshot from Jar where he comments on Spockter's video regarding Peach's thumbnail and compares Peach's to a rabbit asking why she looks like a rabbit in the thumbnail, even though that's a still from Peach's groomer story. Okay, here's something that's very odd to me. The point I just explained of the whole self-deprecating thing, Spockter explained this in his video. This does not look like a lie at all. I feel like you're misreading that. Consider the context of what I exclaimed earlier, Luke context you probably failed to understand. Say for instance, Hopeless Peaches legitimately intended on committing suicide the day she tweeted what she did. Then she was later talked down from it by a friend and she comes back to social media to find that she quote unquote because she didn't die, she's being assumed as a baiter of suicide. Considering her track record of mental dysfunction, I think it's unfair to assume that she wasn't at the very least considering the act. The very video he got this comment from. Maybe Kai just checked the comments but didn't watch the video, which just seems a little odd to me. And while I was working on my Evrona video, after getting Peach's section for that video and just hearing how upset she was over her grooming video being used against her, I felt bad and I apologized to her in private. She wasn't really bothered by it and she did accept my apology. But Kai, you can't get offended on Peach's behalf. I'm pretty sure if I just left this comment on her grooming video, she probably wouldn't have cared. And before someone tries to use the whole, well, you only apologized after you were called out for it argument. No, as you can see from the date of the comment, I said sorry long before Kai and Omnia's video came out. And it's kind of extremely insensitive to come at us 
about being insensitive regarding the thumbnail when you sit here and joke about it. So I just wanted to put this part in the video because I feel like this went widely unnoticed and I find it very weird that Jars in this video wanting to tell us about the thumbnail when he criticized the thumbnail himself. This is what's known as the Tukukui fallacy. Being a hypocrite doesn't make me wrong. I also didn't know the context for her grooming video yet, so that's why I left that comment. But you saying I criticized her thumbnail? Criticized it by saying she looks like a rabbit? Really, bro? But maybe he's right. I can't think of a more offensive thing than a rabbit. You know, Kai, for someone who says they're not one to trip over a JPEG, you're certainly tripping balls over this black SpongeBob, aren't you? I know I said this twice in this video already, but please don't attack anyone in this video. When I jumped into the Toby drama for the first time, I expected to get a little backlash, but I didn't expect this whole six months commentary civil war to happen. I feel partially responsible for what happened to Hopeless Peaches. If I never made my Toby video, well, the drama with her probably would have never happened. I was going back and forth on whether I should upload this video or not. Well, now it's up, and I just hope it calms the water instead of making things even worse. I've seen a few people already talk about this drama, and they seem to all agree that they just want all of this to end. Kai and Omnia, if you have any problems with this video, talk to me about it. And if you convince me that something in this video is wrong, I'll be sure to make a pinned comment fixing that mistake. I didn't handle things in the most mature way when I did my first Toby video, so hopefully I handled things a lot better in this video. But anyways, I just want all of you to know that I'm done with the Hopeless Peaches drama. I know I said in the Avrona video, this was only the halfway point, but everybody is just so exhausted by this drama and it's getting too complicated to understand what's going on at this point. Now I want to make this clear when I say that I'm done with the Hopeless Peaches drama, by that I mean I'm not going to make a video directly about it. But if I talk about another YouTuber and they spread around false information about Hopeless Peaches, I'll be sure to briefly mention it. I don't make these Hopeless Peaches videos to send hate to anyone. I make them so you guys can go support Hopeless Peaches for everything she's been through.